awake, awake. Yeah, I just felt, um, I just started getting tired now and yawny. <laughs> and I asked Holy Spirit, and you said there's slumbering spirit in the body of Christ. And we must um, pray for the revive, that they, they will be awakened. There was a, it's a time of awakening now, so that they will awaken. Awaken the, the, those that are sleeping. Because, um, and, I, and I heard the words this morning, my spirit, there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Yes. Hallelujah. So awake, Cape Town. But look, if the intercessors are tired, how do you think the rest of the church is going to do? How do you think the rest of the church is going to do if you are tired and slumbering? So the Lord, that's why he said, divine appointment, get here. I put the fire on you. Restore your joy. Heal you. Heal your body. Set you free. And then we can release fire on the church. First starts with us. Yeah, you want to share? Sorry. <laughs> you, you, you know, I think for the past two weeks, the word place where the Lord placed within me, redeem the time. And it would keep on coming back so much that last night I googled the definition of redeem because I want to make sure I understand what he means. And, and earlier on, I heard when you two spoke about the time. And it was exactly what the Lord said, redeem the time. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we are redeeming the time. Do you know that time is in God's hand? He created time. It's a time piece. Okay. Think of this. Time submits to Jesus. I can tell you how to redeem the time. You've got to spend a little time to buy a little time. That's what he gave to Miriam about a year and a half ago. Do you get it? you got to spend a little time to buy a little time. You're spending a little time here to buy. That's because it's costly to spend time with him. you got to lay down something else that might be a lot more fun maybe. I don't know. I don't know what's more fun than Jesus. But you got to lay down something else and it's going to cost you your time. And it might even cost time with your family. It might even cost time on special occasions. But if he's calling you into that inner chamber, then you come. And as the saying goes in the world, time is money. Honey. honey. So if you want revelation, you've got to spend time. You've got to come and buy fresh oil. If you're wise, virgins, you will buy. Today you're buying without money, Isaiah 55. He says, come buy without money. Come buy without money. You're buying without money. You're buying the most expensive thing you can get, the anointing, the oil of God. He says, you're buying it with what? With faith. You're laying down your time and the Lord is pouring oil on you. Just now, Letitia saw it when we're dancing just now. Oil is coming down. Lift up your hands. Receive the oil. Anointing for your workplace, for intercession, for your families. Right now, your businesses, your ministries, your churches. Right now, oil, 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 all over you now. Receive it. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oil. God said to me that it's called rich time. Because the more time you spend with him, the richer it becomes. And I mean, we've had times where we've really been late for meetings. And we're, saying, and we're stuck in the traffic. It's an hour away. And we've got there in 20 minutes. God said, it's my rich time because you spent time with me. That is redeeming the time. Exactly that. As you spend with him, he gives it back to you in abundance. Yes, hallelujah. The Lord is going to, you know, there's a saying. You know, the devil has stolen the time. And he's stolen the money. And we've heard recently, pay back the money. But now we say, pay back the time. And God is able to give you time. Do you know how he gives you the time? It's called miracles. How long does it take from a grape to the, to the table in a form of wine? How many years? Five years, ten years, whatever. Jesus does that, does that in a second. That's a miracle. So what you've been praying for in your family and you think is like this major thing, God says it's a small thing. You've got to think bigger. You've got to think a city getting saved in a day. I just want to just give you some salts. You see, you can take a horse to water and you can't make him drink. That's what the world says. No, we give them salt. So I'm just going to give you some salt to just make you thirsty. Picture this. Um, for the... <laughs> 
All right, you're getting thirsty. I'm giving you some salt. Testimonies are like salt. It makes you thirsty. I want more. I want more. Hallelujah. The biggest problem is going to have today is actually stopping this. Okay, so we've got to get a venue. Come on, we've got to get a venue where we don't have to stop the party at 4 o'clock. I don't know. Christelle, what do you say? Platter Cliff. We can go into the evening. Hallelujah. We're warming up. Hallelujah. So we got it. Hallelujah. Because it's difficult church venues. They've got all kinds of rules and it's like quite restrictive. You've got to do this. And, uh, we just need venues to be able to go 24-7. When revival comes, how do you switch it off? Really, when people are like in trances, going to heaven, whatever. Who saw, who's seen the Chronicles of Revival uh, video? You haven't seen it. Some of you have seen it. Isn't that exciting? God did that in Cape Town, all over the place. We're going to do another interview. Vili, Vili is going to be there on Saturday. Hallelujah, that guy that's on the, on the, go and watch it, Chronicles of Revival. It's on, it's on, um, you can go to the Global Days of TPW on Revival, but actually it's just go to, just go to YouTube. Put the Chronicles of Revival, it should come up. And um, anyway, it'll get your faith going because God has done awesome things 30 years ago here, taking people, 134 people going to heaven. At one time, going to heaven, 50 people seeing the tribulation, another 50 going to hell. Those people that went to hell, you don't have to preach to them again. They get saved quite quickly. One trip. <laughs> saved. No, we don't going there. Where can we go? Heaven. Oh, saved. Instantly. You don't have, you, they're instant evangelists. 50 people go to hell for like an hour or three. I don't know. Some of them had to be carried off the next day. They went through the night in trances. Some three days in trances. He's got the most amazing story. I said, did this happen? In my lifetime, I didn't even hear of such things. In your city, did you know about it? Did you ever go to his meetings? Did you? You know, Billy. Okay, so listen. We're saying to the Lord, do it again. Not when. Now. Faith is now. We say now. Who wants to go to heaven and just stay there for like a day or three or whatever and just look at Jesus? Jesus tells you everything you need to know. Send you down. Boom, boom. With the anointing, with the fire, miracle signs and wonders. He's going to do supernatural things through nameless faces, people. No one knows them, but suddenly dead have been raised. Where? In that street. What happened? It was a bit of a house church. What's a house church? Don't worry. Book of Acts. Have a look. <laughs> new wineskin. New wineskin. New wine. No new wineskin. No new wine. Get flexible. Flexible. Blessed are the flexible. Because they shall have wine. <laughs> You gotta to learn to drink as well. Some of you, I see you battling. You are having sipping saints here. Mm. Not quite my brand of church. This. Mm, I wonder. They don't do it like this at my church. I wonder what these guys are doing. Well, the good thing is you're not at your church. We're trying to get back to Jesus' church. We're trying to like discover the ancient path here of the Book of Acts church. House to house, breaking bread. Every day, not what Sunday, what Sunday. You might have Sunday off. But every day you're gathering in your houses, fire of God falling, sick being healed. Hallelujah, in your house, making disciples, baptizing people in water, in your bath, casting out demons. Hallelujah, just like Jesus, in your house. You get it? That's the new wine skin. From Plata Cliff to wherever else, all across this hall. And it's awesome, this house is so high, you can look at the whole Cape Town. Oh, we can prophesy from there. Hallelujah. What a place. We're going to speak life over Cape Town. So bring other intercessors. Okay? And uh, we've got limited space. We can only take 300 people. <laughs> but over 100, we have to bring more chairs. You have to buy more chairs. Okay, so, no, seriously, I looked at that place. I said, the one room we can do to put 100. Um, but we won't have much space to dance. Then there's another section. Then there's the pool area. We can baptize people. Just don't fall in the pool. So listen to this. I'll tell you this. Neil has a dream. And in the dream, uh, Neil and I are discussing our favorite topic. Do you know what my favorite topic is? It's Jesus and revival. All right. So we're talking about revival. And uh, Neil says, uh, we're talking about when's revival coming. Okay. You want to know when revival's coming? Do you want to know? Do you want to know the dates? Do you want to know the dates? People love the dates. What do you think the Lord told us? He told us in the dream. Okay, we'll tell you on Saturday. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, you see, that's salt. Okay, so we'll tell you now. Don't worry. 
So what happens is revival. He, you know, Neil says he suddenly prophesies. His revival is yeah. Yes. Now to me, it's like okay, yes, prophetically that's yeah, but I want to actually see the steak on the plate, not the pie in the sky. It's like revivals, yeah. Let's see the miracles. Let's see the dead being raised. I want to see the manifestation, the man at the station. I don't want to stand here waiting for a revival train. I want to see the stay, the the staying, the stay, uh, the, the train there. I want to see the miracles. I want to see the dead being raised. We want to see the whole city, and we want to see neighborhoods getting saved. Okay, I'm not talking about people getting out of wheelchairs. That's not revival. That's normal. Normal. In Valley's meetings, normal wheelchairs, blind eyes opening. That was normal for ten years. He had normal. I know it's not normal. Maybe in your church. Blind eyes opening. That was normal for him. And then he, he said, then it started to cook. I like that. We were normally just getting people out of wheelchairs. Normal. For 10 years, we just did normal crusades. Thousands of people got saved, discipled. In your neighborhoods. He was all over the Western Cape 30 years ago. For 10 years, he did this. Actually, so it was for 40 years. 40 years ago, he started here. And he sowed all over here. Two-week crusades. Every single neighborhood you can imagine. He was there. And he, I said, we need to chronicle this. So we started the Chronicles of Revival. And so he, he's telling me all this. I'm thinking, man, we want this now. And the Lord said, the power of the testimony is when you share the testimony, the same power that created the testimony is present then when you hear the testimony. That's why it's so important when you share your testimony. Because it's creative power coming out your mouth. And now we don't have time for testimonies in church. Because we've got to get on with the program. And we've actually lost testimonies. Remember in the days? Testimonies? No, no, no more testimonies now. Now, whatever. So now we need to bring the testimonies back because the testimonies release something. So watch this. In the dream, he says, the rivals, yeah. I said, in that case, come, Holy Spirit. Now we were walking in a city. All right? Yeah, you can just sit down, sit on someone's lap, sit on the floor. Um, <laughs> it's like your house. Just, just chill out. Hallelujah. So, you know what happens? We're in a city. Now, you imagine, I think, let's say the main street of Cape Town. You know, imagine a lot of people walking there on a month end. Month end. Full street. Everyone's busy crossing the robots or whatever. Stealing, whatever. You know, normal. And, uh, <laughs> you know, hijacking. All right. <laughs> well, it's Gauteng, you know, more hijacking, killing people, stealing purses, whatever. You know, uh, just a normal day in Cape Town. Steal, kill, and destroy. And a, and a few people might be smiling on the street. It's just a normal day in Cape Town. We've got used to that. It's not supposed to be like this. So now we, I say, Holy Spirit, come. And, and immediately, instantly, the Holy Spirit came. And everyone on the street fell down under the power of the Holy Spirit. We didn't have an organ. I didn't sing, sing anything. We didn't have a keyboard player. We didn't have a set of drums. We didn't preach. We just said, I just said, Holy Spirit come. And he came to town. And when Holy Spirit comes to town, everyone was falling flat on the floor. In the street, broad daylight, no service. You, you like that? Are, are you like looking at me like? <laughs> Someone is said like a cow looking at a new gate. <laughs> That's a good one. What's he done? Bad man. Okay, that's my best best of recons. Bar Khanan. <laughs> All right. So what happens is the Holy Spirit comes down and then Neil and we also down by the way we're not just standing there checking it out we're down I like to get down under the power of the Holy Spirit don't you like it when the Holy Spirit just downs you and you're just lying in his presence just soaking up the glory okay so now we're down and Neil can hear the people saying some people saying this is the Holy Spirit this is the Holy Spirit this is the Holy Spirit and they start to get up and the believers that were down started to get up and start witnessing and starting getting people saved. How, how easy it is to get people saved when the Holy Spirit's taking them down in the street and everyone's down. It wasn't a bomb blast. It was the Holy Spirit gave them a blast. Boom. Gentlemen, 
Holy Spirit. Very gentle. <laughs> Boom. Like a rushing mighty wind. He's coming. Hallelujah. They were down and people started to get saved right there. The problem is not, you know, when the revival comes, the problem is not going to be how to get people saved. You just look at them and they get saved. Just say, come Holy Spirit, in the line. Boom. Whole line. Pick and pay. Down. Say, right. Come out, you devil. Ah! <laughs> you, you, you need Jesus. Boom. Get them saved. It's right there in the, in the line. Why are you standing there complaining about the queue for an hour? Get them saved. Get them delivered. Take them back home. Your home. Don't send to them, pastor. You're the pastor now. You know what a pastor is? I said, do you know what a pastor is? It's a shepherd. So just start doing your job. You've got a shepherd. We all got a shepherd. Doesn't mean you're pastors, but you all got a shepherd. You all got to evangelize. Doesn't mean you're an evangelist, but you all got to evangelize. You understand? You all got to prophesy. You're not prophet. So at the end of the day, you got a shepherd. Those disciples God gives you. You take them home, come to my house, baptize them, cast out the demons, get them full with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues in the same day. Hey, stop waking with a six-week course. Tell them about baptism. Nonsense. I'm telling you now, we're doing it too slow. We think we're in school. This is not school. School's out. Go and look at the book of Acts. Do it like them. They had the right pattern. They didn't even go to seminary or cemetery or nothing. They went with Jesus for three and a half years. They got the Holy Spirit and they did the works of Jesus. And they turned the whole world upside down because they didn't have some manual or some eldership restricting them from moving. You don't need permission to start a church in your house. You've got instruction to do it. Don't have to ask anyone to obey the word of the Lord. Obey it. The fear of man is a snare. So I loose you from the fear of man. Go and do it in your house. Start in your house. Start in your business. Make disciples. Show them the power. You've got to give them some signs. Then they wonder. Signs. And wonders. they got to wonder. When they see a sign, they wonder. Where are we going? They look at the sign. Oh, we're going to Jesus. You know, like you gotta, if, you go, if you go to Cape Town, look at the sign. You see the sign that says Cape Town? You go there. You don't look at the sign. Oh, it's probably just a, let's take a photo. Selfie. Look at that sign. <laughs> we're taking photos of the sign. No. The sign goes to Jesus. Now we power the sign. Oh, look at the sign. Wheelchair. Someone got healed. We're saying, what's it? What's it? God, get out the wheelchair. The blind, the dead being raised. What is that? It's a sign. The sign points to who? To Jesus. So if we don't have signs in our lives and the signs are not following you, we've got a problem. And God is empowering you today, not just, just to be intercessors. You've got to be make disciple makers. Where in the Bible say you can only intercede, you just, oh no, I just intercede. The Bible says go and make disciples of all nations. Teaching them to obey everything that will come on you. It tells you in Matthew 28 what a discipleship is all about. He says go and do what I do. Follow me. Make disciples. Make disciples. You've got to make one disciple. Two disciples. Have house church in your house. You've got instruction from Jesus to do it. Make disciples. So the spirit of revival has been released. Over a year ago in a house. And he taught us how to get revival. And that's what we do with the gatherings of fire. So bring your friends and bring the hungry, bring the broken, bring the dead. Seriously, if you want a couple of dead people, it's fine. <laughs> no, seriously. Bring the dead. So you might have to bring some pastors. It's fine. <laughs> I'm serious. A lot of them are dead. Seriously. We must pray for the, the dead pastors. Seriously. We love them. Okay. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you're alive. You can have a lot of knowledge, but you ain't raising the dead. We want fire. We don't want to play church. People are dying. So we got to say, get on with it. Step it up. We're stepping up. We're saying, no, old church style is gone. Wow, two-hour service. What's a two-hour service? Let's get like China, eight hours, and say, no, minimum. No, no, people get tired. I said, what? God is raising up warriors, worshiping warriors, full with joy and he says my house must be full with joy and if you're praying and you don't have joy you're at the wrong prayer meeting seriously he says my house shall be full with joy it's a house of prayer if there's no joy get delivered <laughs> seriously you got to get delivered from what oppression religion it's a religious demon that keeps you like having a prayer meeting everyone goes out there very solemn like a solemn assembly even nehemiah 
in Nehemiah, he says, hey, stop weeping. It's a holy day. Have a party. And then he says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Holy day is a day for dancing. Not for mourning. There's a time for mourning. And we've repented and we've wept and we've repented and we've wept for the city. So now what do we do? We're going to rejoice. We're going to get our joy back. And the joy of the Lord on you is the glory of God that people will see and say, what makes you so happy? You stand in a queue, bopping or weaving. I say, geez, what are you? I don't have earphones in your ear and you're just rejoicing. Hallelujah. It's like, what is going on with you? I'm just so happy. Hallelujah. Why are you so happy? I've got Jesus in my heart. And you sound like you like saved like two weeks old. You know, a two week old Christian, they're just, just hunting on, floating. Just get back there. You know, babies are beautiful, isn't it? Because they're fresh. Out of heaven. A born again person that's brand new is fresh out of heaven. And that's why it's such a beautiful thing. And then we get old. Within like, what, six months we get old. And, no, you can't do that. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, we got rules, yeah. Careful. Mind upset the uh, Sanhedrin. <laughs> you know the Sanhedrin. They don't like the Spirit of God moving. Because they want to control everything. No, break that spirit of control. So God's bypassing the structures. He's bypassing the man-made structures and now he's created WhatsApp, Facebook and the internet so that the messages can come bypass so you don't have to go and ask so-and-so, so-and-so before you prophesy in the church because now everyone's getting prophecy through WhatsApp. No pastor can control it. No bishop controls it. Just bang, bang. Unfortunately, the devil's also using it for the nonsense. So we can just stop the nonsense forwarding and we just forward life you can prophesy through your WhatsApp. And if God's giving you a prophecy, you just send it out. If it's a God thing, He will get around the nation within a, an hour. You know what I mean? So it gives you a word, you just send it out to your whatever, your group, 20, 30, whatever. And then and if, it's, if it's a weighty word, it'll carry weight. It'll go right around again and again and again. And just put your name on it because that's accountability. Because I always look, who's, who's, who's accountable? Don't, don't, don't put Angus's name on it. <laughs> unless your name is Angus <laughs> please don't do that that's, that's terrible I can't believe Christians are doing that and if it's not Angus Bucken don't put Angus Bucken you, you know if it's Angus say Angus but I'm saying <laughs> put his surname on oh it carries more weight Angus you know any prayer he prays and then he's binding him I just know he doesn't pray like that it's like you know what what is this how can you be a Christian lying now and spreading whatever fake news expecting anointing on this thing so now God wants the authentic coming out of you. You're going to have visions. You're going to have dreams. And God's going to take those words all over the nations. Because God's giving you a voice. And that's why he has allowed the, the social media. So some of you are binding it. You're supposed to be loosing it. <laughs> you know, I'm off Facebook. Some guys think thinks he's holy if he's off Facebook. It's like you think you're holy because you don't go to the shops because they're sinners. I don't go to the shops. There's sinners there. It's fail. <laughs> What do you say in your house? No, I don't go shopping. I don't do Facebook. I'm holy. <laughs> Did Jesus do this? He was in the marketplace. You know what I mean? The fire on you must burn off all the rubbish of them. If you're worried that it's going to jump on you, you're not hot enough. <laughs> Seriously. When that hairdresser puts her hands on your head, she goes, whoa, what's up? <laughs> it's like, there's fire. I say, yeah. When you put it, I say, come on, come on, come. Put your hands close up. Boom. <laughs> and then the anointing goes on them. They fall on the floor. Cast a demon out. Say, come on, do the hair again. <laughs> Just don't cut my head off. <laughs> I'm getting a demon out. and They're doing it. <laughs> Cutting you with it. With the scissors. Okay. Just be careful with the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> just be careful at what point the anointing falls because <laughs> you can release the anointing literally you can just do that point at someone say for lord release now you driving in the highway release as it comes out your arm you know it comes out your arm just like that boom and it just the anointing comes out of you because it's in you release the anointing release it over your city speak life wherever you go because he's empowering you and he's empowering you today hallelujah you got it? You're excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Carrie, this is the best man. 
is the best man. Carry the bag. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, um, can you come forward, please? The Lord is saying that you are a... Don't you be around. We start with the fire in you. And that you should have faith. So he's just going to say... Father, we thank you. We thank you for your fire, your flaming torch. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your fire now in the name of Jesus. Fill our sister. Fill her with your glory in the name of Jesus. Bless you. Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> we thank you for that, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Fire. 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 In Jesus' name. Fire. Right now in the name of Jesus. Fire. Fire. We thank you for your fire and your glory upon our sister now in the name of Jesus. I bless you. His fire, his flame, stay close to him and you'll be able to carry the torch. And take the torch only where he tells you. And he says, gather the other torch bearers. In Jesus' name, bless you. We bless you now, my Father. We honor you. Did you have a word you want to share now? That other one, later. Some lady, you said you had a word or something. No, don't forget. <laughs> he remembers things better than I do. <laughs> now, uh, the lady in the purple, your name? You probably thought I was staring at you. <laughs> it was over her head, but it could be for more than just her. But I saw this huge, um, it was like a combination of a gavel and a scepter come down over your head and I really belo- believe that the Lord is saying he's ruled in your favor I don't know what you've petitioned him for recently but is this gavel scepter thing <laughs> came down um, in your favor so I don't know maybe it's for more but I very specifically saw for you hallelujah hallelujah I'm let's pray. so we just say amen is there witness with you have you been asking for something you know where you live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Foxes have holes and birds have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So we declare. You're going to have our. He's ruled in your favor. He sought out our house. Even Jesus didn't have a house, but he gives you one. So, Father, we thank you right now. The, the, the gavel is the judgment. That basically means the Lord is judged in your favor. He's judging your enemies. And He's destroying those strongholds of lack, poverty, and rejection. And we reject the spirit of rejection. We break it off you now in the name of Jesus. And we release the spirit of adoption that cries out, Daddy, Daddy, Abba Father. He's your Daddy. He's looking after you. And He says He's given you whatever you petition. If you petition for a house, you don't know where to stay. Thank you, Father, for a house. Hallelujah. How many of us has the Lord given you a house? You didn't know where you're going to stay? If He's doing it for us, He can do it for you. We say yes. Favor. He's giving you favor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You believe? You rejoice. All right. Standing faith. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Where's that drunk girl? The drunk one. Where's the drunk girl? Come forward. I'm drunky. <laughs> I want you to pray with her, okay? No, I'll just explain now. The heavy drinkers are from Paul. Hallelujah! <laughs> Bring them on Friday. Hey, have you got friends that like to drink? Yeah. <laughs> Plata Club. I like it. I like the way she answers you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah. In the river. Um, when we were praying, you know, just now when you were falling all over the place. Um, 
I saw flames on your feet, and um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you do or what you're longing to do, um, but I have a sense that it's almost been plunderous in a way. It's sort of, you know, what what am I achieving? What is what is this all about? And the flames represent, you know, the Lord's will and direction. Um, and the scripture that comes to mind is everywhere your feet will tread. You know, I will claim from you know, I'll give to you, I'll claim for my kingdom. And I believe that you no longer need to just wander through life. You need to step with intention under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so you step with intention and the flames are burning and everywhere you put your foot. So that my guys. <coughs> <laughs> um, to just add to that um, often when people describe a vision I can, I can see it and sometimes the Lord gives them more as you walk in obedience I believe those flames will not just be your feet but your yes. entire being no, yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's what I saw that's so it's um, <laughs> one, I think it was January 2016 the Lord said to me the, the, the steps of the obedience are fruitful in abundance yeah. and it's the, the obedience as you walk that will that <laughs> and uh, that vision that you got is as you step in the blood and you walk, the grass is growing under your feet. And you release, I'll, I'll get the picture, we did, I did a, a, a picture on that. And he's releasing life wherever you walk with the fire. Because that fire brings life, not destruction. Yes. Hallelujah. Where, what do you do for a living? Testimony. I'm feeling drunk. Just one and then I resigned a few years back I said but I want to work for Jesus and then I traveled the world faith-based journey global challenge 2014 and then God called me back to, to um, teaching and then actually back to my family's house and I'm like, no, Jesus, I can't go back. <laughs> Not there. <laughs> and then he restored me and my mother's relationship. And then otherwise, um, I, w I left in Gothenburg in Gauteng. And then he said, no, come to fall. And I was like, that's my dream since 2006, the first time I entered fall. And then I'm like, but why Paul? <laughs> why now? And then I thought like, okay, I mean, even now. <laughs> and then I lose, lost everything. It felt like it, but I gained joy. <laughs> so then I teach at a school for three months and then I resigned again. I want to work for Jesus. <laughs> and then I got involved with a, like a life um, guide work and then I wasn't happy there again <laughs> and then inside I was like something is wrong why can't I be happy where I am and then I resigned again because I want to work for Jesus <laughs> 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 and at this moment I'm working for Jesus. <laughs> so at this moment, I also don't have a house to stay in. I have nothing except Jesus. <laughs> wow. 
and I'm honestly joyful. <laughs> the only thing, <laughs> the only thing that I honestly um, waiting is my husband, so that we can work for Jesus. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. We're going to pray for you so that you can work for Jesus. <laughs> we, we like this. Come stand here. And we, we, we just thank the Lord. Okay. Is there anyone else looking for a house? Jesus in the real... You're also looking for a house. Real estate. Real, I mean, houses. Okay. Look, houses. Okay. All right. So if you're near them, just... just you're also looking for a house. Okay. So let's put, the hand, put your hands on them. Because like Miriam said, it, it might not just be for you. It could be for other people. Hey? That, that, that gavel. All right. So the Lord's ruling in your favor. If you're looking for a house, Jesus is in the real estate business. He, ma he, he, he made the earth and the fullness. I will step on your ground for the fire and the grass to grow. No, Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Yo, wherever she goes, the grass is going to grow. Hallelujah. So, so wherever, wherever, wherever you get your accommodation, they're blessed. So, Father, we thank you for every single person, our sister here. Hallelujah. You know, if you've given up houses, you've given up your life, you've given up work, everything. You've given up for who? For Jesus. Because you want to work for Jesus. And he sees it. He sees your yes. And you've actually followed up with action. So, right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you that everyone here receive a house accommodation now father we thank you for the house now in jesus name now in jesus name and lord we thank you for our sister fire over her feet fire 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 hallelujah just drink just keep drinking hallelujah you you got to be a heavy drinker to cope with what you're going through <laughs> seriously some of you guys don't understand how it works the more difficult things are the more you have to drink seriously you got to really drink of the Holy Spirit. you got to really laugh every day. Because laughter is like medicine. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. So you got to really learn how to laugh again. I, I, I had to learn. I, I can teach you. Just, just quickly. Do you like to learn? It's quite simple. It's like this. you got to crank. You crank shaft. You remember those old cars? You had to go like this. Some of you are like that. You're a, bit, a little bit dusty. R rusty. Rusty. Hallelujah. Rusty, you. <laughs> I see your brother at the back. Yellow of the couch now, after. Yeah. Yeah, we'll let him to laugh. Okay, so stand up. Everyone, stand up. We're just getting you ready for Gary. So you'll have an easy session when you're all full of joy. You're nearly full of joy. Some of you are still battling about you kind of just sipping, sipping. Heavy drinking. How much of Jesus do you want? How much of those? More. His name is more than enough. El Shaddai. Not just enough. You've got to be overflowing. So it goes onto your neighbor's house. It goes into pick and pay. It goes on the floor. You've got to let it out. But you've got to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. But your neck, your neck must break. Not your will. So Lord, we thank you that you've broken our necks. Hallelujah. Not, say, not my will. But your will be done. Fill me now with the oil of joy. The oil, the oil of joy. He say, he who sits in the heavens, he who sits in the heavens shall, laugh. shall laugh. I'm sitting in heavenly places now. I'm in heavenly places now. And I'm gonna hose myself <laughs> in Jesus because I can see what Jesus sees for Cape Town and for South Africa. I see good news. I see the devil getting a hiding. I see the devil getting a hiding. He's getting run out of town. He's going into the sea. Ha ha. Okay, so get the get ready. Get your handle. Go like us. Ha. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Joy! Slava! 
it might take you a few times to get used to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> more. The joy is your healer. The joy brings healing, medicine into your soul. Hallelujah. Good. Ha ha. Ha, 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 ha. Do this with your children. The children like this. They come children with your lot. Ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha, ha. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You got it? Take the joy. It's yours. You don't, you know, some people call it holy laughter. You know what? It's not holy laughter. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. He gives you joy. So, you know, when you talk, you don't wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you to talk. Holy talk. <laughs> you talk. When you pray in tongues, you have to wait for the wind to blow and then God takes hold of your tongue mysteriously and goes... No, if you want to talk in tongues, can you talk in tongues now? On demand. Okay. Laughter is the same way. You got it? You can laugh anytime. Because if you're sitting in heavenly places, you can see from his angle. And it's quite funny. The devil is defeated. Completely. Revival is breaking out all over Cape Town. We see it in the spirit. We prophesy and we, and we proclaim it. What you see is what you get. Hallelujah. You got it? So can you laugh over Cape Town? <laughs> Not cry. <laughs> I said, good. You're doing well. That's it. Good. Do it again. <laughs> drink, 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 drink. You're getting unblocked. Ha ha ha. She didn't know what she's doing. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. So you can laugh when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and, and, and helps you laugh, but you can laugh on a manual. You know, manually. When you're driving down the road and you're feeling heavy, you say, Lord, it's time for a bit of a laugh. You just sit and laugh with Jesus. You sit in love with your dad and say, Lord, show me something funny. And he'll show you something funny. And you just hose yourself. Like, look in the mirror. <laughs> say, I'm funny. Hallelujah. Some, take, some of you take yourself too serious. Hallelujah. We've got to learn to laugh. I'm learning still. I'm still a beginner at laughing. But I'm, gonna, I'm taking my joy back. He's given me joy. It's my inheritance. It's your inheritance. Take joy back. And you can't be walking around and say, I've got the joy of the Lord like this. I'm very joyful. It's just deep down inside. I'm still looking for it. It's got to come out your face. You know what I mean? Joy is quite evident on your face, in your eyes. And the, and the unbelievers are looking at you. This religious one that prays all day looks at you and thinks, Jeez, this guy, I don't want what he's got. He's got, seriously, seriously, he's got depression or something. That's maybe why he prays the whole time. But I don't want what they got. Because they're going to a prayer meeting and they come out more depressed than they went in. And they're all like serious. But when you come out of prayer meeting, they must think you've been drinking. And you're going to say, come. I'm going to tell you, we've got a special drink there. We were talking at Christelle's house, was it yesterday, about drink. It's awesome. Her husband says, this drinking is like rehab. <laughs> I said, if you drink this, you are rehabilitated for life. It's the new wine. If you taste and see the Lord is good, He sets you free just by drinking. The devil has perverted it. But the thing is, we're drinking stuff without any alcohol. That's the problem. We need the alcohol, the, the heavenly alcohol that you get, in, you get intoxicated with Jesus. You get addicted to the presence of God. You get addicted with life. And you say, I'm not going to do without this any longer. Give me another drink. I'm not leaving until I have another drink of Jesus. Wow. How thirsty are you for more of Jesus, the lover of your soul? He didn't save you to work for him. He saved you to know him, to be with him. And out of the overflow of the joy and the oil, you will go. Not slaving, but joyful. So you are joyfully working for the Lord. But we got to work out of intimacy. Hallelujah.